The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, this is the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in it, we receive a reading from John's Gospel. And it's a sudden change into John's Gospel as we were reading from Mark all the way up until now for all of the Sundays. So all of a sudden, we transfer over into the sixth chapter of John. So we kind of land sort of in the middle of things. And uh, it begins a new series of gospel readings over the next couple of Sundays that are what is commonly termed as John's bread of life discourse. So it uh, begins with the feeding of the 5,000, and it goes on to explain more and more about what's going on. And what we have here is a Eucharistic miracle, essentially. So... You guys probably have heard the common story before said in different places, but there's 5,000 men, not including women and children, who are following Jesus and the disciples. And uh, the time comes where it's time for them to eat something or go home. And Jesus says, basically, these people are so famished. They've been following me for so long. Let's provide something for them to eat. And... Philip replies to him saying, 200 days wages wouldn't be enough for each of them to have a little bit. So it's a crazy amount of people here. And Andrew finally says, there's a boy here who has five loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus has everyone recline, and he takes the loaves, gives thanks, and distributes them to those who are reclining. And everyone eats and has their fill. And when they are finished, there are so many fragments left over that Jesus asked that they be carried and collected up so that nothing would be wasted. And they fill 12 whole wicker baskets full. These five loaves and these two fish had become more than over 5,000 people could even eat. And I think in modern times, it's not always popular to talk about miracles. I think the scientism that we face a lot of times makes it not in vogue to talk about things that aren't absolutely scientifically verifiable. It makes it kind of difficult because maybe we think that we risk offending other people when we start talking about miraculous things that we might see, or uh, especially like the existence of angels or something like that. But when you actually ask people and do studies on it, a lot of people believe in miracles and believe in the existence of angels. It's just, like I said, not in vogue to talk about these things. So far that a lot of times when this miracle story is presented, it's presented in this sort of like quasi-weird way where, oh, it wasn't really a miracle of multiplication. It was actually the miracle was that Jesus got everybody to share the bread with that they had with each other. And I just don't think that that does justice to who Jesus is at all or what the nature of the Gospels is. What we have here is somebody basically trusting in Jesus, giving to them what they have, and Jesus takes it, multiplies it, and makes it super substantial, more than what the people could eat. And I've always found this reading in particular very interesting in Mark's gospel, because immediately after this gospel passage, Jesus dismisses the crowds and the disciples leave in a boat to cross the Sea of Galilee. And it's at that point where Jesus comes to them walking on the water. And it's, it says in that passage that, you know, they're terrified that they're going to die. They see Jesus walking on the water. They think he's a spirit, and they become very afraid. And Jesus says, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And he walks into the boat, and the storm just ceases. Everything breaks up. Everything is safe once again. But the interesting part is the final passage of that story, when it says, that the disciples did not understand the episode with the loaves, and instead their hearts were hardened. They were amazed, but their hearts were hardened. And I think that's what we see at the end of this reading from John as well. This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. 
And since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. And there's a certain hardness of heart that's evident there because they don't see all of the pieces complete yet. They see this man who takes these, this tiny amount of food and he multiplies it for them. And that's enough to say, this is the Messiah, he's going to be king. Let's make him king, carry him on our shoulders, triumphant. But Jesus recognizes who he is and that that's not his mission and that's not what's best for the people. In a certain sense, the people here do not understand the episode of the loaves and the fishes. We view this miracle as purely a material gain. They are supplied with this food more than they could imagine. But Jesus doesn't let it end there because Jesus is the Messiah who's to save people from their sins. This miracle is to show them that Jesus wants to supply everything for them. This 12 wicker baskets full is a sign of completeness in the Jewish numerology. So the pieces that are left over not only fill them, but show this completeness in what's there. The episode of the loaves and the fishes here is not only to feed their bellies, but to feed their souls. And this is what Jesus wants for them, but they don't understand yet. And because Jesus recognizes this in them, he withdraws to pray alone. Jesus desires to give us what will bring us to the Father. And I was listening to a talk by Dr. Peter Kreeft recently where he described miracles as an afterburner. They're not going to change the direction of your vehicle, but they're going to provide an extra squirt of jet fuel to propel it in whichever direction you're already heading. And I think that we see that the miracle that's presented here provides a little bit of a stumbling block because people aren't necessarily always pointed in the right direction. And Jesus wants to give us what will satisfy us in our most deepest recesses of our hearts. As the Bread of Life discourse continues, we're going to see a little bit more into what God wants to truly give us. And what that is, is the gift of his very self, that we might feed on him in the Eucharist, and by that feeding on him, have life, to come into union with God himself. So over the next couple of weeks, pay attention to the Gospel of John, this chapter 6, where we talk about the Eucharist and what great plans it is that God has for us and what his great desire is for us. Union with him, true happiness, and satisfaction in all of our desires, both in the bread that goes into our bellies as well as the bread that goes into our souls. God bless.